Hi, welcome to today's vlog. I promised you a vlog today on Thursday, so here it is. But I wanted to just talk about being greedy because it's something I'm nowhere near as greedy as I used to be. Now the Cambridge Online Dictionary defines greedy as wanting a lot more food, money, etc. than what you need. Now the title of today's vlog comes from a conversation I had with the great Harold Mayburn, who is still going, still playing piano, phenomenal pianist, amazing career. And way back, I think it must have been 2013, it was 2013, might have been 2014, it was one of those two years, uh, Harold Mayburn was in Peterborough playing a gig with Eric Alexander and Vincent Herring and a few others. And I was chatting to Harold afterwards in the bar, I had some lessons with Eric Alexander and Eric Alexander personally, so he invited us over to hang. And I said to Mr Mayburn, I said, well first of all I apologised to him because sadly because it had snowed, there was no piano at the venue and they took him on a Yamaha Clavinova and I felt it was an insult to someone of Harold Mayburn standing that he was having to play on a Clavinova, but he was very gracious about it. I asked Harold Mayburn, I said, you know, what, what's that? I, I ask this a lot to jazz musicians, you know, to prominent legends of, of, of the art. I said, you know, what, what's, what's your advice? What, what, what was one kind of pearl of wisdom you could share with me? And he said, be greedy. He says, because all the greats were greedy. He says, John Coltrane was majorly greedy. And what he was referring to is that they're always wanting more. They're always wanting more knowledge, more understanding of the music. It's, it's they have to have it. They have to have um, that knowledge. And that greed can manifest itself in other ways. You know, I think some of the hate that's coming my way is people who are greedy for success. They're greedy for gigs. I'm not, and this is the kind of thing that I think has really changed in me, especially since becoming a father, but I would say just generally as I grow up and as I become more comfortable and as I achieve a lot of the goals that I've set myself in terms of venues I want to play, um, you know, success in terms of materially or career-wise, I'm not as greedy as I was and I sometimes feel, I've got to say, I've got to sometimes feel a little jealous myself that I don't have that greed, that desire to grab things as much as I used to. I've spoken before about the great Sir Alex Ferguson and what he said about always be proud to say that you work hard. Another thing he used to talk about with his players, they have to have a hunger. You know, he used to say about, you know, they'd win a trophy one year and then he'd look at them, you know, when they arrived back for pre-season or even kind of like a week after they'd won, how hungry were they for the next one? And I've got to be honest, I'm not as hungry for that next gig anymore. I, I, it's just, I see some of these younger players who are coming through, I see the passion, especially around Cambridge, I see the absolute cutthroatness of wanting to get gigs, of wanting to basically push people out of the way. I've seen older musicians have it as well. But when I reflect on that comment from Harold Mayburn about Coltrane, you also, you read kind of in Miles' autobiography, Miles Davis said that, you know, it was like Coltrane was desperate to know more. You know, there's all these stories of Coltrane practicing in the gents, practicing on stage while other people were soloing, falling asleep at home with the horn in his hands. And I used to think that was what you had to aspire to do. That was kind of, I have to practice is literally every single minute that I have in order to become a better saxophone player but do you know what at that time it wasn't making me a better person and 12 years ago today and I told you more in this story back in a long time ago in a vlog I went I was in Belfast uh, for the first time I'd ever visited uh, visiting Katie and 12 years ago I walked um, into the bank, I emptied my bank account, I went to a jeweler's, I bought an engagement ring because that was, well, our relationship and we got engaged. But that was more important to me than kind of playing at Ronnie Scott's or going to play at the Vanguard. And at times, I'll be open and admit to you, and it's not a good thing, that hunger to go back and play at the Vanguard or do Ronnie's was more important to me um, than those other things. But it's not the most important thing. You know, your relationships with your family, with the people you love, are more important than your gigs. Nobody, as they say, nobody says on their deathbed, I wish I spent more time at the office. And having been around to see a few musicians as they go towards the end of their life, 
none of them have ever said, I wish I'd played more gigs, I wish I'd done more of this. It comes down to being greedy for people and being greedy for how you can influence people for a positive. And I think Coltrane was that as well. Um, Coltrane, yes, was greedy for the music and he's left as a fantastic legacy. Well, go back if you haven't seen my review of the film. And what I loved about that uh, Coltrane film was the bit about his family, the bit about how he was so keen to spend time with his family and his life was tragically cut so short, dead at 40. And I used to think 40 was quite old. I'm 38 this year. 40 does not seem old at all. Now you don't have to have been a subscriber to my channel for long to know that I'm a bit of an Apple fanboy but rather annoyingly my MacBook Pro which is like a few months old the spacebar is now not working correctly so according to Apple what I need to do is get my compressed air hold my Mac at a 75 degree angle and use the compressed air to spray the keyboard you can't see Should I switch it off? I think that might not be a bad idea. Fixed it, fixed it, fixed it. Save me a little trip into Cambridge. Well done, compressed air gun. And thank you, Apple's support team. Well, the web page anyway. So I mentioned in the last vlog that this arrived from Germany, from Munich. It is, I believe, this is called the hooky. Hold the hooky firmly with the right hand and lower end cord out like clasp the hooky from the side holder. Now pull strongly on the carrying cable and feel the contour. Give it a go. <laughs> I like the way it's centering around the heart. It feels a bit tight. It is nice not to have anything on the neck. I don't know whether I've got this in exactly the right position. <laughs> Hooky, first impressions, very, very, very positive. Let me play with it for a week. Good, I have put the microphone on. What I'm going to do, I'm going to have this for a week or so, I'm going to give it a proper test, and then I'll do a review next week, so make sure you're watching that. <laughs> I do love this time of year as uh, it's getting warmer, 
sit outside in the garden in the early, well, it's the late afternoon now, early evening, really looking forward to being able to fire the barbecue up in the summer and all those kind of things. I hope you found that useful. I'm really going to try out that hook, give it a full review, and go and check out some Harold Mayman. I'll stick a playlist below of some Harold and Eric stuff. If you haven't heard any of their stuff below, go and check it out. Uh, I'll be back on Saturday with the review of the Yanagasawa W020, which is the replacement for my 992 Soprano. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you really soon. Goodbye.